السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم With more verses towards the end of Surah An-Nisa This blessed and beautiful Surah the surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to establish the, the Muslim ummah on grounds of strong belief with matters of belief, matters of ibadah, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, manners, rights of those who are uh, used to be weak in the society till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he gave them the strength and he gave them the rights from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that created them, whether it's the women, the orphans, uh, whatever in the societies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for mankind, for them to govern their life according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them, they would live in goodly life in this life and in the hereafter they would enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the nature of this life is that it would never be uh, without enemies whatsoever. This is how there is always struggle between the people of the truth and the people of the batil and the falsehood. And that's why for the believers the most precious thing ever on the face of earth is to be on the truth, to know the truth and to be steadfast on the truth. Even if a person is living at a time when the people of the truth are being oppressed or weak or whatever there is, they have less money. It doesn't really matter much for them. What matters is that they are on the truth and they're not deviated and deceived by many of the people on the face of earth when they don't follow the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we, inshallah ta'ala, will discuss verses in Surah An Nisa from 153 to 158. And it talks about a specific type of kufr or disbelief. The disbelief out of stubbornness, out of inad, stubbornness and arrogance. And uh, this is mentioned after the previous verses that talked about the belief in the messengers of Allah and that those who disbelieve in any of the messengers of Allah, they are in reality disbelievers in all of the messengers of Allah because they are the messengers of Allah that are sent, all of them, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So disbelieving in one is like disbelieving in all of them. So now the verses talks about a special type of kufr, the disbelief out of stubbornness, mainly talking about the people of Bani Israel, uh, the Jews, and how they oppose the truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, not with intellect or reason or so, but rather with stubbornness and rejecting the truth uh, with arrogance and stubbornness. Uh, verses number 153 to 158. So let's start with uh, verse number 153. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يسألك أهل الكتاب أن تنزل عليهم كتابا من السماء فقد سألوا موسى أكبر من ذلك فقالوا أرنا الله جهرا فأخذتهم الصاعقة بظلمهم ثم اتخذوا العجل من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات فعفونا عن ذلك وآتينا موسى سلطانا مبينا which means the people of the scripture ask you to bring down to them a book from the heaven. But they had asked of Moses even greater than that and said, show us Allah outright. So the thunderbolt struck them from their wrongdoing. Then they took the calf for worship after clear evidences had come to them and we pardoned that and we gave Musa السلام, a clear authority. So this verse and the coming verses inshallah ta'ala will talk about the different wrongdoings that they did when they've been invited to believe in the final messenger of Allah 
to strengthen and to complete their faith by following the final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they oppose that with a statement that is full of stubbornness and arrogance. It's not something for them to be convinced. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded them of their crimes and their evil doings that was done in the past. As it's mentioned in the tafsir, Ibn Abbas and others, they said that the, the Jews in al Medina they asked the Prophet وسلم, if he can bring a physical book from the skies, like Musa السلام, brought a physical book with him at Torah to bring a physical book and even a book that would mention their names. Each one would have his own book, their names in it. Uh, so this is what it means يَسْأَلُكَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ أَن تُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْهِمْ كِتَابًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ They ask you, the people of the book, to bring down on them kitaban, a book from a sama, physical book that comes down. The Quran, of course, as we know, the final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down from above, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then the Prophet sallallahu convey it to the people. So they asked for a physical uh, book to come from the heavens. The answer to this, and this is usually when a person is asking a question, uh, not because he wants to be convinced, but rather out of stubbornness and out of arrogance, then the answer should be accordingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَقَدْ سَأَلُوا مُوسَىٰ أَكْبَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ If they are truly asking for a physical book to come down and they will believe, therefore, when they see it, that happened at the time of Musa alayhi salam. And did they believe in Musa alayhi salam? Uh, they didn't. And they opposed this when Musa alayhi salam brought to them physically the Torah, as it's, it will be mentioned in the verses, that they worshipped uh, Al-Ijl, they worshipped the calf after seeing this miraculous thing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they asked what is even much greater than this. فَقَدْ سَأَلُوا مُوسَىٰ أَكْبَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ This is something in their nature. Whatever they ask for, that's not the end of it. You would think that this is then they would believe. But they didn't at the time of Musa alayhi salam. But instead they asked for something bigger, greater. And that is, فَقَالُوا أَرِنَ اللَّهَ جَهْرًا They said to Musa alayhi salam, make us see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outright. Make us see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of us physically in this life. So the question then, the first one that they asked the Prophet sallam, it was not something sincere. It was something following the path of their ancestors. فَقَالُوا أَلِنَ اللَّهَ جَهْرًا when they asked to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outright in their life, فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الصَّاعِقَةُ بِظُلْمِهِمْ الصَّاعِقَةُ The thunderbolt uh, stri stricken them because of their zulm and, and wrongdoing when they asked what they're not supposed to ask, when they asked as a way of stubbornness, as a way of arrogantly opposing the truth. ثُمَّ اتَّخَذُوا الْعِجْلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيْنَاتِ And then they took al-ijl, the calf, to worship that calf, that thing that they made from the gold, they made it themselves. They worshipped it besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ After the, the bayanat, after the clear evidences and proof came to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after all of this, He pardoned them. فَعَفَوْنَا عَنْ ذَلِكَ We pardoned them. وَأَتَيْنَا مُوسَىٰ سُلْطَانًا مُبِينًا And we gave Musa alayhi salam a clear authority over them and from the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we see in the verse, that their wrongdoing is an evidence by itself that they won't submit themselves as a result of more miraculous thing to be sent to them. And this is something, as we said, in their nature, unless they believe, unless they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the proper way, and they follow the messengers of Allah, which after Musa alayhi salam came Isa alayhi salam and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And that one of the ways in, in debate and exposing the opponent when they, when they are rejecting the truth is to uh, take from what they said as an evidence against them that they are not the ones that are asking sincerely because of their past they did such and such. Which also shows this uh, that when the verses were revealed it was addressing uh, the people of al Medina and those who were present with the Prophet ﷺ from the different tribes of the Jews in al Medina. But it talks about those who were in the past, at the time of Musa السلام, and afterwards. So uh, how can they be accused of what happened generations before? It's because they are pleased with them. And that's an important concept that we mentioned before. That uh, when a person is proud of his ancestors and proud of what they did, 
then their actions also belong to him. He would be resurrected with them. He will be with them. And because they are proud of what their ancestors did, right, then they are in the same rank with them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would address them as if they are one, which is, it shows how the nations are one. That's how this Muslim ummah is one ummah. And that's why when we refer to the early generations of Islam, this is how we refer to our strength. The best generation ever brought to mankind was the generation at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and the one after, and the one after, as the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith. So when a person uh, is proud of being part of this ummah, and always referring back to the early generations of Islam, then the person would hope to be resurrected with them, uh, to be uh, given what they are given, and to distant oneself from the deviations and the falsehood that the nations before did, because otherwise a person will share that with them also in the Day of Judgment, which is a very dangerous thing. It's all in the heart, and how the person's heart should be sincere and truthful, and uh, always seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and warning oneself against following the ways of the disbelievers and the wrongdoers and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa alayhi salam a clear authority for them to obey the Messenger of Allah and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Bani Israel, uh, remi reminding them of the many favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the many miraculous things that they saw with their own eyes that did not increase their iman and made them humble and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and so on. But they continued one after one verse after one sign and another. They would even increase in their stubbornness and in their arrogance. And they would reject the truth and they would uh, give so much hard time to their messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them. Messengers of Allah are human beings and they are the best of the human beings, messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have no power from their own selves. They're only sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for people to ask the messengers for miracles, this is by itself is an ignorant uh, request. Because the messengers, they come with nothing but inviting them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inviting them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So and any uh, person or any individual, any group, they would bring uh, an evidence why they believed in, in a messenger, the same proof and evidence can be applied in all of the messengers, especially the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As we said, if you ask a Jew or Christian, if you ask a Jew, why do you believe in Musa alayhi salam as a messenger of Allah? Whatever answer comes, right, it will be the same answer that that person should use to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The same thing with the Christians if they believe in Isa alayhi salam. Why do they believe in Isa alayhi salam? Of course, regardless of the distorted belief in Isa alayhi salam, but it's the same thing. Believing in the messengers of Allah, it's the same way that all the messengers of Allah are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to follow and for people to embrace al-Islam and the final messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding them of all more of their evil crimes that they committed out of stubbornness and out of arrogance. Uh, ayah number 154, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَهُمُ الطُّورَ بِمِيثَاقِهِمْ وَقُلْنَا لَهُمُ دُخُولُ الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ لَا تَعْدُوا فِي السَّبْتِ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا Which means, and we raised over them the mount of, uh, for refusal of their covenant. And we said to them, enter the gate bowing humbly. And we said to them, do not transgress on the Sabbath. And we took from them a psalm covenant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَهُمُ الطُّورِ We raised over them the mount of a tour in Sayna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised it. And this is actually each one of these things that are mentioned here. are mentioned in more details in the rest of the Quran. And the context here is not meant for all of these miraculous signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be uh, explained in details. It's just mentioning one after the other, the favors of Allah on them, the signs that they received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the miraculous things that they happened at their time, but they still did not believe as a result of this. So one of which is when the mountain was raised on top of their head, when they refused to take the book of Allah with strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the whole entire mountain be elevated from the ground for them to prostrate. It was said when they made prostration, 
they did not even touch their uh, foreheads to the ground because they were afraid and they kept looking at the mountain from underneath right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that so that they would take the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strongly but we'll continue inshallah ta'ala with with more of this mention in this verse and the verses to come right after the break so stay with us inshallah <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We're still in verse number 154 from سورة النساء and the different crimes that بني إسرائيل they did when Allah سبحانه وتعالى gave them all kinds of miracles in which they were supposed to submit themselves and humble themselves with iman with faith. But instead, they opposed that with arguments, with stubbornness, with disbelief, that uh, to the extent of which they did the same thing to the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when they asked him to have a physical book that comes down from the skies for each and every one of them with their names written on it. They are di dictating from their own arrogance what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should or should not do. Instead of humbling themselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and submitting themselves to his orders and worshiping him alone. So in verse number 154, uh, mentioning some of the things that happened to them or to, the, to their ancestors, and they are pleased with their ancestors, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, did things for them, but it did not benefit them in any way or form, but rather they increased in their stubbornness and their disbelief. We raised the mountain on top of their heads, by the covenant that was taken from them. وَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ وَدُخُولُ الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا And also one of the things that is mentioned in the Qur'an in more than one place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ordered them to enter the gate of uh, the city of Jerusalem سُجَّدًا in, in, in state of prostration, bowing down, in state of prostration as a way to humble themselves when they uh, were, were ordered to fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to gain back the city of Jerusalem, but instead of them submitting themselves to the orders of Allah, they refused and they said to their messenger uh, for, uh, that he, he and his, uh, uh, his Lord to go fight, but they would not fight. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in Surah Al-Ma'idah, mentioned that in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them when they were ordered to do so, they uh, entered with their backs and they did not say hitta, they did not say the word of expiation of sins, but rather they altered the word. So all kinds of uh, misbehaving and stubbornness against the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ Another thing which is also mentioned in details in other parts of the Qur'an, وَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ لَا تَعْدُوا فِي السَّبْتِ uh, وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا and we ordered them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them not to transgress in a sabt, a sabt, the Sabbath. On the day of Saturday, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade certain things for them, as it's mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, in more details. As it's mentioned in the verses, it was a town that is uh, by the sea, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them not to fish, and not to seek provisions on the day of Saturday. But instead of obeying the orders of Allah and submitting themselves, they made a trick in which they would put their tents on Friday night and then they would collect it after the day uh, of uh, Saturday ends. Which is basically, this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from them. But see, this is something that they would do over and over again. Uh, so they would not submit themselves and humble themselves uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the essence of the ubudiyah, the worship of Allah, is to have this full submission to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Because the opposite of stubbornness and arrogance is for a person to be humble. And to be humble, that means, as they say, to be down to, to earth, that means a person submit himself to the truth. Uh, the, the essence of the meaning of humbleness is for a person to submit oneself to the truth, not to another human being or so, but to the truth. And if the truth is the goal and the person submit oneself to the truth, then this is the best person ever. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them not to transgress in the day of Saturday. And by the way, we as the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu we were guided to the virtue of the day of Jumu'ah. And the nations before us, 
they were misguided away from knowing the virtue of Jum'ah. And it was mentioned in the tafsir in Surah Al-A'raf that because of them refusing to, uh, to have the day of Friday as a virtuous day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them by having it difficult for them on the day of Saturday. And it's still not the most uh, virtuous day, it's not the most holiest day of the week, but rather it's Jumu'ah. It's the day of Jumu'ah, the day of Friday. And that's why it's great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing more virtue and better in one's life than to be a Muslim. And that's why it doesn't matter really what is the status of the Muslims today, whether it's uh, physically, financially, whatever there is. But at the end, when a person dies and meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everybody would wish they were Muslims. The disbelievers, they will wish they are Muslims when the angel of death will come to them. And this is something that is even mentioned in a few verses afterwards about Isa alayhi salam. So the sincerity here has to be very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the orders to these people to be righteous and to be upright. But they, out of stubbornness and arrogance or whatever reasons, they turned away from the truth. And it was given to this ummah of the Prophet And the guarantee to this ummah is based on its actions. So if a person turns away with the same attitude of stubbornness and so on, then they will be deprived from the goodness that was given to the Prophet Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says we took from them heavy covenant. A heavy covenant was taken from them to be obedient to Allah and the covenant with heavy oaths have been taken from them to be obedient with all of this and the mountain to be on top of the head for them to say that they would follow the truth and they would abide by their covenants with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, but still they broke the covenant with Allah with all of these signs with all of these miracles, as it's mentioned in the next verse. So for them to say to the Prophet ﷺ, let us see a book, physical book coming from the heavens, it's the same uh, tricks that they used to do in the past. In the past, nothing of that availed them or benefit them or made them believers. And they still broke the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the next verse, 155 says, اللَّهِ وَقَتْلِهِمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ وَقَوْلِهِمْ قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفِ بَلْ طَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Which means, and we curse them for their breaking of the covenant and their disbelief in the signs of Allah and their killing of the prophets without right and their saying our hearts are wrapped. Rather Allah has sealed them because of their disbelief so they believe not except for a few. So, فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ مِثَاقَهُمْ Al-Mithaq or the word Al-Mithaq or covenant has been mentioned in the past uh, few verses more than one time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from them. And especially in the last verse, وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَهُمُ الطُورَ بِمِثَاقِهِمْ The covenant has been taken from them. And heavy covenant has been taken from them to be obedient to Allah, to follow the ways of the messengers of Allah. But what happened? They broke their covenants. فَبِمَا نَقْضِهِمْ نَقْضِهِمْ When you undo something. ميثاقهم Their covenant. They undone their covenant. As if the covenant is when a person makes a covenant with heavy oaths, it's binding. It's like a very strong knot. But what did they do to it? They undone it. They made it loose. They broke the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكُفْرِهِمْ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ And disbelieving in the ayat of Allah that was sent to them. These miraculous signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they disbelieved in it. They were not grateful to Allah. They did not humble themselves. And moreover, وَقَتْلِهِمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ وَقَتْلِهِمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ And their killing of the prophets without the right to do so. And of course, there's no right whatsoever that would make a person kill a prophet of Allah. The best human beings ever. The best ever walked on the face of earth. The prophets of Allah, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to convey the message of the Tawheed they killed many of these prophets. وَقَوْلِهِمْ قُلُوبُنَا غُلْف And they would give themselves the excuse why they do not have the belief or why do that they do not receive al-iman or belief and why does not stay in their hearts because the hearts are ghulf. Ghulf means uh, it, it's covered, it's wrapped. It's wrapped so there's no faith is to enter there. And the heart, as we said before many times, and this is the message of the Qur'an, 
The hearts are مثل الأوعية is like containers. Is the containers of whatever you fill the hearts with. If either you fill the hearts with goodness and wisdom and iman and faith and so on, or a person would fill his heart with any other filth. Because if it's not the faith and the goodness, then it's something that is evil and impure. So uh, what happened is they said that our hearts are wrapped. Nothing is penetrating, nothing is going into their hearts. And as a result of that, it becomes very harsh, they become very stubborn and so on. But in reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ طَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا بِكُفْرِهِمْ Allah sealed their hearts. Why? Because of their own actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. It's because of their disbelief, بِكُفْرِهِمْ Because of their disbelief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed their hearts. So this is a warning because if a person know the truth and willingly staying away from the truth that a person is supposed to submit himself to it, the punishment of that can be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would seal the hearts. Sealing the hearts, that means the hearts is not able to see the truth from the falsehood anymore. The person would be uh, adorned for that person, the bottle or the falsehood. They would see the evil as a good thing and they would see the good thing as evil. All of this is because of knowingly turning away from the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them by making them completely confused. And the spread of corruption on the face of earth and even the superiority and, this, and the strength and the wealth and all of this, if they are in falsehood, this is even more and more for them to be immersed into disbelief and to subject themselves more and more to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بَلْ طَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They do not believe except little. Whether they have a small amount of belief or only few among them, they believe as a result of the sealment of the hearts uh, because of their own actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. As we said before also from the principles of tafsir and explanation of the Quran, that when the verses is talking about a certain group of people, it's usually you would find characteristics mentioned in there because of these characteristics and these attributes, they are punished or rewarded. And that's what anybody that recites the Qur'an, it is not just to talk about these individuals and what evil that they did, but also to benefit on our personal level, that to stay away from this evil attitude that happened from them, so that the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ does not receive the same outcome or the same punishment as the nations before. Because no one has a relationship between oneself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than the ubudiyah or the worship of Allah. There is no such a thing as I belong uh, to this ummah or my father was like this or the Prophet ﷺ is our messenger. Where is our actions and speech? And of course, yes, if a person die in the state of Islam, uh, the Prophet ﷺ will intercede for that person. But to die in the state of Islam, to be a Muslim and to be steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person needs to make sure that there is this level of submission, otherwise the hearts can be sealed as a result of these evil characteristics if a person fall into it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned more about them, of what evil that they did, so that they do not really, uh, they should never ever ask for what they asked for, because their history is full of all kinds of opposing the truth after the matter has been made clear to them with miraculous uh, things. وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ The next verse 156, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ وَقَوْلِهِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمَ بُهْتَانًا عَظِيمًا وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ وَقَوْلِهِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمَ بُهْتَانًا عَظِيمًا And basically, and we curse them for their disbelief and their saying against Maryam, Mary, a great slander. So another kufr. Because, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made their hearts sealed because of their disbelief their disbelief and rejecting the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto them and disbelieving in the messengers of Allah and killing them and so on and وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ and because of their disbelief وَقَوْلِهِمْ and their statement or what they said about Maryam the mother of Isa alayhi salam the mother of Jesus peace be upon him when they said, when they said about her بُهْتَانًا عَظِيمًا great slander when they accused her of zina وَالْعَيْذُ بِاللَّهِ accused her that she gave birth to, Is to Isa alayhi salam which is a miraculous birth without a father they claimed that this was as a result of fornication may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, curse those who would say such a thing because Maryam 
عليه السلام she gave birth to عيسى عليه السلام a miraculous birth to عيسى عليه السلام the son of Mary as a miraculous birth as a messenger of Allah one of the mighty messengers of Allah and whoever says otherwise he is cursed in this life and in the hereafter and it doesn't matter what deeds they do what goodness in them whatsoever uh, this is something that negates one's uh, iman and one's faith uh, to accuse the most uh, pure the most virtuous of mankind to accuse them with the worst crime ever there is even sometimes worse than killing and the same thing applies for those who accuse the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aisha Radiallahu Anha they are the worst individuals on the face of earth when they would accuse the most pure of the human beings the same thing those who accuse the companions radiallahu anhum if a person is already uh, someone that is a wrongdoer and people accuse him falsely this is still haram and it's forbidden but imagine accusing the most pure of all human beings the most virtue of all the human beings they would accuse them of the worst crime ever what level of slander that is that's why the ayah says buhtanan azeeman Buhtan is, it, is in itself a severe crime, which is a slander, slandering Maryam alayhi salam. It was not a small one or a simple one. It's buhtan and azim and a great slander because he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified her and made her, chose her over all the women on the earth at all times. And they would accuse her in the most important thing to a woman and that is her iffa, chastity and righteousness and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all evil but we'll continue inshallah ta'ala with the uh, rest of the verses in this episode after the break so stay with us inshallah <laughs> Uh, still with verses uh, in Surah An-Nisa from verse 153 to 158 and we stopped at verse number 156 about how uh, the people of Bani Israel when they disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they claimed or they said this evil things about Maryam uh, the mother of Isa alayhi salam and they slandered her a great slander uh, and we said how that is the greatest uh, slander that can ever be uh, committed because it's against the most pure of all women and uh, the most virtuous of them and then more even than this وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّ قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيْسَى بِنَّ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍ مِّنْهِ ما لهم به من علم إلا اتباع الظن وما قتلوه يقينا which uh, means uh, وقولهم إن قتلنا المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله and for their saying indeed we have killed the Messiah عليه السلام Jesus the son of Mary the messenger of Allah and they did not kill him nor did they crucify him but another was made to resemble him to them and indeed those who differ over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption and they did not kill him for certain. And this will be completed in the next verse inshallah ta'ala. So this, in this verse 157 uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying more of their crimes that they committed. That they have no rights whatsoever after all of what is mentioned that they would ask for a physical book to come from the heavens thinking or for the believers to think that once that happened to them they will submit themselves and they would believe and they become obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that didn't happen in the past and the more they ask the more it's clear that it's a matter of stubbornness and arrogance and turning away from the truth uh, can it be to the extent of which where they would kill a messenger or they would claim that they killed the messenger of Allah because they killed many messengers of Allah but when I come to Isa alayhi salam, they claimed that they killed him. وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بَنَ مَرْيَمُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And their statement and their belief, إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا Indeed, we, as if they're saying it, very proud to say this. 
that we killed al Masih Isa ibn Maryam, that they said that they killed Isa alayhi salam, the son of Mary, Rasul Allah, a messenger of Allah. What is a worse crime than killing a messenger of Allah? The messengers, when they are being sent by the kings in this world, what happened when the messenger is being killed? Wars are declared immediately, right? And this is the sign of the war being declared. So a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a messenger to the people and they would kill him. Isa alayhi salam was not killed as the verse says. And the Quran is the evidence against them because there are many of them are confused about the matter. Isa alayhi salam was never killed, was never crucified. This is something that has been made uh, fair seeming to them, but that never happened. But before we continue with the verse, just for the fact that they claim that they uh, killed Isa alayhi salam, and they're proud of this, and those who are of the present generations, they're proud of their forefathers' belief, and they believe in the same way. Therefore, in the Day of Judgment, they will come in the Day of Judgment with the sin of killing Isa alayhi salam when he was never killed. And that shows the severity of the intentions, right? So uh, a person believing that they are proud of killing Isa alayhi salam as a messenger of Allah, that makes them in the Day of Judgment receive the punishment of someone that truly killed Isa alayhi salam when he was never killed. So, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بِنَّ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ How evil that is. And it's just for human beings to think for uh, just few seconds with the real intellect. A messenger of Allah sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be killed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ they did not kill him. They did not crucify him. But instead, it was made to resemble him to them. Someone else, they thought that it was Isa السلام, and someone else was crucified and not Isa السلام. How do we know this? From the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet وسلم, the final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكٍ مِّنْ and those who differ uh, among themselves with regards to uh, Isa السلام, and they are in doubt of this, they are in doubt of it. Nobody has certainty in it. Nobody has seen that clearly and they don't have the proof of that whatsoever. Even in their present books that are present today, there is no proof whatsoever that this was Isa السلام, that is being crucified. They have no knowledge of this. It's only following a uh, following uh, assumption. It's just a matter of assumption. And we can see that in the world that we live today in. Many of the things that people think it's facts, it's all lies. People can easily spread lies and um, fabricated news and things of that nature. And it has its effect on the people. And it takes a while for them to uh, see the other way or to disbelieve in these facts that are well, people think it's facts when it's not. So uh, human beings, they have these tendencies and that's why one of the principles of the deen of Islam is to make sure that things are authentic. Of course, the Quran, the authenticity of it is beyond uh, questioning because this is in the level of tawatwa. That means um, thousands of not millions of people taking it from one generation to the other. And also the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ to make sure that things are authentic. But the nations before they have no uh, system and really they would authenticate their books and their text. Where is that? And that's you know just a person with intellect would see the difference between how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved this religion of Al-Islam. The Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ compared to the books before that we all believe in. The Torah and the Injil, we believe in the Torah and the Injil that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but where's the authenticity of it? The alteration and translation with different meanings and so on. Where is the authentication of this? There's no such a thing. There's no work that has been done uh, with many, many individuals to uh, authenticate the books of, uh, of Wahi or Revelation from Allah, except this final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's why human beings are in need of the final messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So they, have, they follow nothing but assumption. So this is also to the believers to comfort themselves. When you are uh, talking to them, 
know for sure with certainty that they have no certainty. They only assume things. Even if they claim or they look like they have strong conviction, it is not strong conviction. It's nothing but assumption. Why? Because there's no evidences of anything. It's all words of mouth from people to say things and to manipulate others in many different ways and many different sects that these sects and ways are not referring back to text and clear text uh, in which in the Muslim Ummah, yes, the Ummah split into 73 sects as the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, all of which is in the Hafai except one. And when they asked the Prophet ﷺ, what is this one? He said, Ma ana alayhi al-yawm wa ashabi, what's me and my companions are on today. And that what is the Prophet ﷺ and the companions were on at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it's something that is saved for us something easy for us to go back and to learn it and to hold fast to it. But the nations before, everything is lost and it's nothing but assumptions. They follow assumptions, they follow desires, they follow opinions and so on. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينَ Certainty, with certainty they did not kill Isa alayhi salam. There's no doubt whatsoever. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned clearly that he was never killed, he was never crucified. And what happened to him instead, as the next and the last verse for today, inshallah ta'ala, it says, But instead, rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rafa'ahu ilayh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated Isa alayhi salam. Rather, Allah raised him to himself. And ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. So this is what happened to Isa alayhi salam. They differed among, them, among themselves to what happened to Isa alayhi salam. The Quran give us the truth and the final truth that people should abide and to have certainty in that Isa alayhi salam was never crucified. He was never killed. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him to himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the almighty and he is the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Isa alayhi salam will come back at the end of time on the face of earth to uh, bring back with him the authority of the goodness and the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it will come inshallah ta'ala in some of these details of these verses. So as we see in these verses, just these verses that we talked about and the great benefit to learn, all of these things that are mentioned are explained in more details in other parts of the Quran. But what is meant by mentioning all of these evil doings that they did as a result of stubbornness and, and arrogance is to show them that when they asked for the, for the physical book to come to the Prophet ﷺ, they have no grounds for this. It's just a matter of stubbornness. So uh, a person has to differentiate between someone asking to learn or to be convinced or whatever, or someone that is asking just for the sake of asking to be stubborn, to uh, already decided that they will continue in matters of disbelief. As one of the chiefs of the Jews of Al-Medina, uh, when they came to the Prophet ﷺ, the first day he came to Al-Madina, one of them was the father of Safiya, the future wife of the Prophet ﷺ, and her uncle, his brother. When they went to see the Prophet ﷺ, when he came to Al-Madina, and uh, she said, uh, عنه, she heard them when they were coming at the end of the day, very tired, and her uncle used to play with her, but when, he saw, uh, when she saw them very tired and very concerned, and, he sh and she started hearing what they were saying to each other, and they said to each other that, Ahuwa uh, huwa, is it him? Is it him? Because they were waiting for the Prophet. ﷺ. They were waiting for the Messenger of Allah, the final Messenger of Allah, and that's why they came to Al Medina. So the other one said, Yes, it is him. They had the full description of the Prophet ﷺ with all details. But then he asked him, So what are you going to do? And he was among the chiefs of the Jews in Al Medina. What are you going to do as a result of this? It is him. He is the Messenger. He's the final Messenger of Allah. So what are you going to do about this matter? So see the response was something very strange. He said, عَدَاوَتُهُ مَا بَقِيت I will be his enemy as long as I live. I will be his enemy as long as I live. An enemy to the Messenger of Allah, to the final Messenger of Allah, knowing the truth and turning away from it. Right? And this is what happened to Isa alayhi salam, what happened to the prophets before. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran, for the people to see that whoever is in this level of stubbornness and turning away from the truth, there's no point of wasting one's time to try to convince the person with intellect and reason and so on. The, 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 the list of crimes are so much in which they have, there's no room to convincing here. It's to turn away from them. And whoever 
believes believes and whoever disbelieves they disbelieve and the outcome is, uh, is definitely something that is explained in the Quran if they continue in that level of stubbornness and they die in that state after the truth has been made clear to them there's nothing but the everlasting hellfire for them as a result of their disbelief and uh, worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelieving in the messenger of Allah but then we see also the great benefits that we learn from these uh, verses are so many and uh, we just need to reflect again over these verses and to see how the Prophet ﷺ went through all kinds of trials in his life from different types of people, whether it's the people of Quraysh, whether it's the, uh, the people of the people of the book in al Medina and so on. And the Prophet ﷺ was steadfast and the revelation comes and it's conveyed and calling people to worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made or gave the victory to the Prophet sallam and the truth prevailed and was successful and victorious that's why the people of the truth they need to hold fast to it and never to be deceived or intimidated by the people of falsehood because you carry the truth you just need to be patient and to be steadfast and to have the honor and dignity in following the truth we continue inshallah ta'ala with more of the same subject next time wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا